Greetings everyone! Welcome in this new episode of Into the Murder Hole. I hope you are doing well. Today we'll talk about what is the Urtindo, its origin, its different forms as well as the philosophy behind it. Let's get started! First of all, we will talk about the words urtindo, which can be literally translated song of length. Some researchers say that this name relates to the duration of the song, which can last for quite some time, as well as the long breath used to sing. This gave us the most usual and understood translation, long song. But according to the academician Rinchen Biam, it's not because the songs last for a long time, but more because it has been preserved and sung since ancestral times transmitted from generation to generation. A more accurate translation for Urtindo would then be ancient song. Another theory relates to the topics approached in Urtindo, such as the nature and the universe, animals, mountains and rivers, love and relationships, or laws and principles of human life. These topics being eternal, it could be understood as eternal song. It is believed that the Urtindo have originated from the ancestors of the Mongols in very old times and is a big part of the Tengrism worship and became a statehood art 2000 years ago during the Hunu period. The Urtindo might be one of the best representatives of the melismatic music, which is the art of singing a single syllable while moving between several different notes in succession. Music of ancient cultures used melismatic techniques to induce a hypnotic trance in the listener. The Mongolian Urtindo has gradually taken shape and been kept and transmitted in a variety of diverse forms and styles among Mongol ethnic groups. Its vocal techniques were influenced by the primal sounds made by nomads while herding animals, and it is believed that this magical singing can help keep the energetic balance between humans and nature by communicating with it in humility and respect. It is all natural that we find the Urtindo in every aspect of the Mongols' nomadic life, from daily life to statehood tradition, belief and worship, or religion and rites. It is also well known that singing an urtindo in its full length can have healing properties, as well as being energetically as strong as 108 Buddhist lamas reciting mantras. The Urtindo was, in all time, mostly sung alone while sitting in nature, riding horse or herding animals. During celebration opening, the Urtindo chin would be accompanied by a murhorch, a limch, which is a flute player, or even both. And in some occasions, the songs would be performed in group. The classification of the different types of Urtindo was traditionally related to the meaning as well as the purpose of the songs. The statehood urtindo are ceremonial songs that are sung as a call toward Tengir during statehood rites, ceremonial activities and feasts of honor. Each Mongol ethnic group has their own repertoire selected from ritual Edzam, Shaftir, Gur and Tsar urtindo. The Edzam Urtindo originated from the calls of Mongolian ancient worship and belief and are a result of the development of vocalization, speaking organs and language. This type of long song is a musical offering to the rites related to nature and daily life. 
The Shakti Rushtindo relates to the Mongolian Buddhism and were developed and formed around the 13th century. This type is deeply involved into the life, arts and philosophy of the Mongols and advanced into a larger genre. It also influenced the development of the Edzam style and share many similarities with it. The Guru Tindo are songs that were formed around 1750 and represent the religious recitation, mantras, chants as well as ritual songs of Mongolian Buddhism. According to studies, it's evident that this type of Urtindo was only developed and spread within Buddhist monasteries and centers. The feature of Gur songs is that the methodology of composing was dedicated for writing both long and short songs. The Tsar Urtindo are sung widely in the environment of statehood rights in Inner Mongolia, more precisely by the ethnic group Tsahar in the area of Shirinkhov. In this type of urtindo, a soloist sings, accompanied by a group of singers that will give him or her a bass or boto using voice techniques close to the one used by homage. Each of these five genres have a chorus that is sung by all the people present in the ceremonial rite as an expression of honor, veneration and respect. The Tabu Urtindo, called Besrek Urtindo by the Hazar ethnic group and sometimes called as a life-themed Urtindo, comprise the long songs that have no ritual background and are forbidden to sing in any environment of rites, both statehood and religious. Each ethnic group includes dozens of Tabu songs which are sung during everyday life activities like herding or riding horse. To give you a better idea of these different types of Urtindo, I put some interesting links in description to please you here. Also know that this magical singing can be felt and be sang by anyone, as it was a gift from Tengir to the world and to humanity. Unfortunately, in the 30s, with the influence of Russian music as well as the development of theater and stage culture, the Urtindo mostly lost its magical purpose and understanding and became more of a simple performance. At this time, the revered artist Dorjav Maksarjav felt that the Urtindo was at risk and started to change its form in order to preserve it. His student, the revered artist Dorjtagwa Jigzao, continued this work in the 50s. He sang and recorded a few hundred Urtindo on vinyl. In the 70s, the revered artist Norovbanzat Namjil, who was Dorj Tagwa Jigzao's student, made the Urtindo be known all around the world and pushed its stage form to its apogee. It then became divided into only two groups, the Besrek Urtindo and the Edza Urtindo, this time related to the musical structure instead of the meaning and purpose of the songs. The Besere Kurtindo are seen as simple in structure, relatively short in length, and does not require excessive singing skills. On the other hand, the Edza Murtindo are more complex in structure, can be much longer, and require more skills to be sang as they can reach up to two and a half octaves in range. The Urtindo was proclaimed in 2005 and inscribed in 2008 on the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Finally, if you want to learn more about the different types of Urtindo as well as the different specificities about the different ethnic groups, I would really suggest you to check out the website created by my dear teacher Dorjtagwa Myagmar Suren which shared openly his research to build this episode and who is an amazing Urtindochin as well as foro researcher. You will find detailed information about the Urtindo. The link of his website is in description. So I think that's it for today's episode. I hope that it was interesting. As usual, feel free to like and share and be sure to subscribe to this channel to get the latest videos notification. Also, for more direct interaction, you can join the Discord server freely. Every information is in the description, you can check it out. And until next time, may the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you.